Hiya, um, my name is Simon. I'm going to show you how to actually make some beer directly from uh, grains and hops today. Um, I've been doing this for about two years. Uh, love actually doing the brewing. It's a hobby that you can actually get something out of it, which is brilliant. Um, I'll be going through the step-by-step -step process with you uh, from how to actually clean the equipment that you need first. That's most, most important. You've got to have everything sterilized before you actually do any any type of brewing whatsoever. Um, go through what the actual hops and grains that I've got. Um, I will show you uh, the process that you actually need to do, how to actually put it all together, and hopefully, successfully you'll get a, a light brew at the end so what we have here is the actual products that we're going to be using for this actual brew um, what i'd recommend is you get a handbook or a, a brew book of some description uh, this is the one that i have um, which is called homebrew handbook and it's uh, by david law and uh, Beshel grimes um, basically it's a brew book that gives you all the details from beginning to end of how to actually do any type of beer that you want to type of brew. So as you can see here, this is a porter and it gives you the details of what you actually need, the pale malt, the medium crystal malt. It gives you your weight and your grams, how long you need to do the mash. It'll give you the boil process and what types of um, hops you need to do as well. It will give you your starting gravity and it will give you your target um, ABV. We'll go on to that in a bit and at the end of the process that will give you what hatch, what the actual percentage of alcohol you've been able to brew. Um, you can get it from any good retailers. Uh, this one is 14.99, it's by Psycho Books and as you can see there it's a UK 14.99 US 19.95. Many different books are available. Uh, this is just the one I use. Uh, the brew I'm going to do today is a type of American IPA. It's a citra based. Citra is gives you the as it says it's a citrus based flavored um, hops which gives you a beautiful beautiful um, almost golden color and I've uh, and it will give you a lovely brew. Um, so all of the details are here from the, the hops, which will come in silver bags here for foil. They are the um, basically the buds of flowers that are dried. You have the malts that are already um, being crushed, ready to go in. You can get uncrushed, but if you do go through the uncrushed, you're going to have to go through a milling process to try and break out the grains to be able to actually start. Um, removing the sugars out of the out of the actual grains themselves and then last but not least is obviously yeast i'm using a mangrove grow mangrove jacks us west coast m44 again you can experiment with different yeasts whether the top brewing or bottom brewing um this one i found works out brilliantly with this actual um brew that i'm doing okay important step and one of the first things you've got to do is make sure that everything you're actually going to do in the brewing process is sanitized and cleaned. At the end of the day you're going to either be enjoying this yourself so you don't want to get ill from your own brew or you're going to be giving it to family and friends so therefore you don't want anybody coming back to you and saying hang on you made me ill on the water I've just drank from you not very good. So what I've done today is the first thing I've done is actually gone and sanitized everything that we're going to be using in the brew today. I've used a packet of here of sanitizer this is one that doesn't require any um, any rinsing is a no rinse version. You can get ones you can, uh, where you actually do have a, to, to rinse afterwards. Just make sure you check the package. You can get them online from any normal uh, homebrew store or on your Amazon or eBay or any of those great online services there. Um, the other thing you can use is uh, a bottle of sterilizing fluid here. Um, this will actually be allow you just to uh, put a little bit into actual into the actual um, uh, heated water and that will actually sanitize as well. Um, you can use this, I prefer to use the sanitizer because then anyway, that's been designed for the brewing process. Right, on to the next step. So, right, the first thing we're going to actually do now is to actually start to actually put the products together that we're actually going to do uh, to actually start the brew process. First thing is we do is I've cleaned, made sure that all of the uh, sanitizer is out. I've actually given it a, a, a full wash, made sure we're actually all cleaned. It's all dried inside. Um, everything's in place, including the grate at the bottom. That's if you do no, don't want to use a bag, you can actually put it straight into this mash tun. It will actually collect and actually stop any of the um, uh, small particles going through at the bottom. I still prefer to use the grain net um, when I do what they call the sparging later on. It just allows you to actually hang it up over the actual um, kettle 
and start to put water in very very slowly to get as much as the sugars out you wouldn't be able to do that if you actually did it within the actual um, uh, mash tun itself so first thing to do put the bag in um, make sure you actually get it as close down to the bottom as you can um, just so that obviously when you put the grains in you're not just going to overspill it over the top um, next thing you need to do is to start adding the water um, I'm going to have a I'm lucky quite healthy here because we do actually have a stainless steel sink that is by where I actually do my brewing so what I'm able to do now is just put this into a, a, a half mix you need around about the 60 degree I'll Okay, I've just done a, a quick check for you. Uh, on the actual brewing book itself, uh, which is again, this one that I told you before, it goes through the whole brewing process as well. So on here, it tells you when you're actually doing the mash, it needs to be above 68 degrees centigrade or 154 degrees Fahrenheit. That is to allow the process to be able to get the sugars out of the grain. At the end of the day, that is what you're trying to do. You're not going to add any more sugar into this uh, brew whatsoever. It's all going to come from the grains. That's why it's essential that you try and get that process perfectly when you're actually doing it. So what I've got to help me is a little thermostat, um, which again goes into the actual brew, um, which is a little probe uh, against a digital thermostat. I put that in now, so it's ready to go. Uh, and then I'm going to start adding the water. Again, I'll try and get it as close as I can to the temperature when I'm going through um, the hot and cold water that we have here. Uh, you can just actually, if you need to, just use a, 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 a couple of boiled kettles and then some cold water, try and get it up to the temperature. This particular unit has a thermostat control, so we can actually get it very, very close and we can turn it on and off as it's getting close, or it should actually do it yourself. But again, with all of these type of equipment, the more you spend on it, the more you're actually going to get the benefit. This one is fairly close, but it will actually go over temperature. So I do have to keep on monitoring it. Um, there is other kit out there which will which will do the full process for you without actually having to touch it. So again, it depends on how much money you want to spend and the process that you want to go through. Um, but I like the fact that I've got full control from beginning to end all the way through this process. Okay, hopefully you can actually see the water starting to get to temperature. According to this, it's at 60, we did it at 63, so it's getting very, very close. Um, the temperature will drop slightly when you actually put the malts in. That's due to obviously because of the temperature against the malt that's in the bags against the temperature of the, the hot water. So expect it to go down and be able to actually bring it back up again. Um, so this particular recipe has three different malts in. We've got pale malt, we've got crystal malt and we have carapillus. Um, this particular recipe, I uh, just need to pour the bags in. Uh, obviously, normally what you'd actually do is measure out to the units that you want. I've slightly adapted this recipe to actually make sure it does a whole lot in one go. Um, so I'll start the pouring in, and um, as you're actually going in, do it slowly, and actually start moving around, mixing it around as you're putting it in. And what that will do is just make sure that you've got all of the grains covered, and you get a good even spread of the actual layer. Um, of the brew. So let's start with uh, one of them. So as you can see I'm just slowly adding the malt grain. This is a crystal malt one so it's nice and dark colour and um, that's going in. I'm just slowly adding it in and mixing it at the same time. I've still got the temperature coming up. Um, it's currently at 62 so we're nearly there. And as I say, I'm expecting it to drop a little bit as these go in, but we'll adjust as we need to go along. So, that's the first one in. The smell of this when you're actually brewing is amazing. It just smells like a gorgeous porridge that you're actually making. Um, it's really good fun. Um, this will be in here now for an hour. Um, uh, that's what, according to the uh, mash roll, um, of this. Um, as I said, the mash process is just literally bringing out the sugars that you've got within the grains. Um, the boil process that you do later is to actually make sure that you're getting all the bacteria out. Um, and then the hops you add in actually go and help protect as well and put the flavouring. But also we found that that helps um, to actually keep uh, the beer safe. So that's why it's, uh, it's put in. So. Just carry on adding my last bomb. This is the biggest bag, this is 3 kg. So this will take me a while, so uh, I'll catch you in a minute. Just 
just thought I'd show you what it's actually like within. Um, so if we just bring this down, we'll see here it's like a porridge. I wish there was smelly vision you, but the smell that comes out of this is absolutely amazing. If I just stir it now, you'll see. You can just about see the grains that are in there. And they'll be now stewing away. I'd say this gets left for an hour in here. Um, so what I've done is still coming up to temperature slightly. As I say, it did drop. But we're now currently at 65 degrees C. So as I say, it's above 68. So a little bit longer to go. And then we'll pop the lid on and uh, stop the timer. And away we go. So as you can see, I've lifted the uh, the bag up now. So that's obviously got all of the things. I'll just lift the camera up and you might be able to see. So what we have here is the bag now hanging. Excuse the uh, uh, the uh, the thing on there. Um, basically, we've got the bag hanging up there. All of the grains are actually in there. You can just see the drip at the bottom here just coming out. So what I've got is some hot water in a bowl here. And I'm just going to slowly start pouring over the top. But in the meantime, I'm whacking up the mash tun which is now going to become the boiler uh, up to try and get it over the 100 degrees so obviously start the rolling boil process bring it up to just about full level on this or near enough because obviously this will give you 23 liters which is what you're trying to get um, and then that will give you roughly about 48 500 mils of, um, of beer um, so I'll start this process off and I'll try and get a, a view for you from the video um, and then I'll see you in a minute Right, I hope you can see that. What we've actually got is the bag now hanging over the actual mash tun. We've got it dripping down there on there. If I just go in, you'll see, hopefully, that the grains are all there, um, suspended within the mesh itself. So what I'm going to do now is start pouring some water over the top and I'll show you how to actually start a sparge going. The boil is up, it's coming up now as we try, as we speak. So I'm trying to actually save time, bring it up to the 100 degrees whilst we're actually going through the process. So if you give me a second. Right, very, very carefully, I'm pouring the water over the grains just very very slowly because you want it to drip out of the bottom and you're trying to actually go around all of the grains that is left to actually take as much of the powder that was left or the sugar that's there and pouring it into the actual mash tun at the bottom obviously you've got to be careful that you don't go over what the full limit is of the uh, of your kettle underneath so be very careful to keep an eye on the bottom to make sure that I'm not being stupid and suddenly get a leak everywhere so I'm just being very 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 carefully okay well as that's uh, now coming up to the boil um, in the actual uh, mash tun I just thought I'd show you what the hops look like. These are literally, as you can see, is just dried flowers. And they're just there, they're obviously picked off the tree, um, which is a hop, and there's different varieties of hops. Uh, you'll find it within the book that I showed you the before, um, all the different lists of hops that you can get, and it gives all of their characteristics and flavors. And basically it's a combination of the hops that you put in, whether one, two, three, five, you name it, as many as you want to. Um, and with the combination of the grains that you use, in which gives you the flavor for uh, the beer that you're trying to make. So we'll, this is the first one. This is going to go in for the full 60 minutes. So this is about 14 grams at the first one. Uh, we're just waiting for it to come up to boil. It's at 91 degrees at the moment. So once it gets to 100, what you want is a rolling boil. And what that is, is it's not going too much at the top. It's just literally rolling over. I'll show you when we get there. And that what that'll do is it'll move the hops around the whole of the boil pan um, rather than just sitting on top. So you actually get the flavors and all of the special processes of the um, hops going through the whole of the brew at the same time. So I'll do that in a sec. Okay, 
I've just added the first one of the hops in and as you can see this is what I mean by a rolling boil it's just gently rolling over right into this corn which means that the whole of the actual brew itself is churning quite nicely you don't want any more than that that's about perfect and what it'll do is it'll change the hops and I'm just going to mix it in and this will actually turn them around and around within the actual um, brew itself so you can see they're going to be floating some will float on the top some will actually start boiling around with it so um, this time timer has started so this will be now an hour in here before we go to the next bit one of the last things that we will do um, towards this is, a, is an item called protoflock what that is designed to do is all of this is in suspension of the, of the um, properties of, of the actual brew so what we want to do is make it as clear as possible by bring in all of those elements, those um, protein, proteins down within the bottom into, uh, into a base. So that's what the protoflock does. So obviously before you start any process of a brew, you do need some of that um, if you want a clear beer. Okay, we're nearly there now. I've got the last of the hops going in now. Everything is in apart from this. This is five minutes towards the end. So this is the last of them being poured in. Okay, give it a quick stir here. Make sure we get everything all within the, the brew itself. I don't want to disturb it too much at the top there because obviously we're trying to bring all of the proteins down now. So that's just brewing nicely. It's at right temperature everything in so there's just five minutes left on there in the meantime what I've done so what I have here is my secondary bucket that's going to actually have the uh, brew once it's uh, completed I'm just waiting for the last few minutes um, you can have multiple ways to cool you've got to cool it as quickly as possible um, the way I've got here is my uh, sink is full of water and also I've put some ice packs in um, to actually cool it as quickly as possible. You can get more professional units with pumps and um, wired copper round around which will actually pump cold water into the actual uh, wart is what it's called once it actually comes out of this process. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for it to uh, start coming through. Uh, it is three minutes to go. So I will show you once it starts um, pouring in. Okay, that's our time up. So I'm gonna start pouring the water into the actual uh, secondary bucket. This is the one that's actually gonna be fermented in as well. So once I've actually got it in here, we'll move the mash tun out of the way, pull this one up uh, once it's cooled down, uh, let it settle into its place it's going to be um, uh, 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 fermenting and then leave it for the uh, two weeks that it's got to be done. So first thing of all, let's open the tap. And as you can see, we now have the wort slowly being brought into the actual now it's really really hard because obviously this is at 100 degrees at the moment so um, it's, we need to cool it down as quickly as possible so uh, let me pour this out and I'll come back to you in a minute right so there you have it we've now done our complete brew and um, we've actually managed to do a uh, complete mash right at the beginning that's when we actually added the grains to actually get the sugars in we've now done our boil which is then adding the hops in and they will give us now the flavor towards the the actual uh, finished product and also give it the characteristics that make it safe uh, for us to drink um, we're now going to add in the the yeast now I'm still waiting for this to come down. I'm getting this down as quickly as I can. Um, it's now in a full bowl of water with the ice packs. It's coming down quite nicely. It's now dropped it already 40 degrees. So we're up to about 50 degrees at the moment. With your yeast, you will have details on the back of the package, which tells you what it's, um, temperature it will actually um, ferment at so on this one it says for best results ferment at 18 to 23 degrees 64 to 73 degrees fahrenheit that's important because if you go any higher than that you will actually start the process or the process will go quicker 
uh, which means you'll burn out the yeast very, very quick. And once you burn out the yeast, obviously you're not getting the full yield. Um, the sugars will be still left into in, in the brew. And therefore what happens is that you won't get the full attenuation of what you wanted. So this is actually shows on here that its attenuation is 77 to 85%. So that means it will use that amount of, uh, it should convert that amount of sugar over to, um, to, um, to alcohol um, and the alcohol tolerance that's on the back it says 11 percent so basically it will will not survive itself the yeast is an active ingredient is a live ingredient it will not produce any more alcohol above the 11 percent what it does is it kills itself off so therefore if you want a higher concentration or a higher brew that's beyond 11 percent 12 to 15 upwards then you need a different yeast to be able to do that for beer, anywhere, as you know and I know, between 3% and 5 6% is normal. Um, so therefore, you know, we, well, this is great for whatever you need. Um, so that's the last, final step. There is one more that within this actual one that I'm doing, and that's called dry hopping. So what I've done is now that the brew and the actual boil is completed with the hops that we had there, I'm going to add, once it's cooled down, um, an ounce or fourth. 14 grams, uh, 20, 24 grams, sorry, of um, hops, which will just stay in the bucket during the fermenting process. And what that is, is, is actually adding a little bit more flavor into the actual brew and it's actually classed as dry hop. And I know these lots and lots of different things I've said, lots of different um, uh, things like wort, mash, grain, hops, um, boiling, you know, to dry hopping. There's lots and lots of different sayings that goes along with brewing i'll try and explain them onto this video site um, and as it's gone through this video today um, i will put them up on the side so you can actually see and have an idea but the process is all the same it makes no difference um, please enjoy it have fun you will um, more than likely make some mistakes as i have done in the past um, if you want to start from the beginning, the best thing to do is with the kits. The kits are fantastic. You get some really nice brews out of the kits. They're actually very, very clever the way they are now. Um, very, very simple to do. You just need basically bucket and sugar, throw it in to a, a nice dry location and then wait until it actually finishes. If you want to get more complicated and you want to get into the stage of brewing your own and making your own brew, this is the process to how to do it. From this, you can then build up to what the class is a microbrewery. A microbrewery is where you have the same type of process that we're doing, but just on a bigger scale. Um, so please enjoy it, have fun, and by all means comment on the bottom of this video um, and let people let me know how your brews went. Thank you very much, hope you've enjoyed it.